finally taking out. We're finally taking out the Novaflex 400 millimeter 5.6 lens. Here we go. Yeah, how's it feel, Josh? That seems more comfortable like that, I'm not gonna lie. So then how do you uh, take a picture? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the part I have to remember. Oh, God. <laughs> so I have to... There you go. We got it situated. <laughs> And also kind of annoying. So welcome back everybody and thank you for watching another video. I have somehow managed to uh, string together. So let's go over the cons to shooting this lens. First of all, the minimum focusing distance is about 25 to 30 feet, which is kind of annoying, but at the same time you're shooting a 400 millimeter lens, so I guess you can't really complain too much. Second of all, it's rather aggressive. So next, it is extremely awkward to shoot. This lens is basically meant to sit on a tripod. There is a larger screw mount here, which you're supposed to mount it to, and then from there, adjust, pull focus, and things like that. However, we did decide to shoot it all handheld. We thought the weather was gonna be a little bit better. Ended up being a little overcast, so we had to shoot at a slightly lower shutter speed. Uh, we shot mainly at about 500 on everything. So as you know, it's best to shoot about twice the shutter speed of what the length of your lens is. So this being a 400 millimeter lens, Normally you want to shoot at an 800 shutter speed or above because it reduces the amount of shake you're going to get with your shot. So I didn't bring a tripod, two reasons. First of all, I thought it was going to be a little sunnier out. Uh, and then of course, secondly, the tripod mount for this lens is not your standard size. It's a little bit bigger. And I couldn't find my adapter. I don't know where it is. I got to find it around here somewhere. So I couldn't find the adapter to mount it to my tripod. So again, another reason why I didn't bring one. Now, yes, I could have mounted it to the camera, but as you can see, that would have been basically pointless. It would have been way too front heavy and probably wouldn't have done much good anyways. Another downside to this, it was not stored properly at all, the camera or the lens. We picked this up down in Miami and in Florida in general it's humid. A lot of homes the further south you go have things that they call Florida rooms, which if you're not from Florida, basically what that is, you take what was previously a patio, you put walls around it, you put a ceiling on it, and now it's a Florida room. They're not insulated well, the airflow isn't quite as good, so I think this was stored probably in something like that or in a garage because the coating on this lens is kind of shot. Um, it's really blotchy. There was some fungus and things like that on it we had to clean off. And the further towards the outsides of the lens that you get, it gets really spotted. So if you underexpose your shots, it's gonna show up almost really pixelated. It's the same as if you're shooting a long exposure at your lowest f-stop like f22 on a modern DSLR lens. Because you're allowing less light in, it's gotta read it for longer. So anything that's on your lens is gonna show up in that photo. It's the same concept with this, uh, so if you underexpose it at all, any issues on the lens are gonna show up on your photos. The camera is also pretty beat up. Now this is a Asahi Pentax Spotomatic, 
It has a little bit of rust, all the lens seals are completely gone, but surprisingly the light meter worked perfectly. Um, the shutter was fine, all the speeds seemed accurate. We didn't have a single lens flare in any of the photos we took. So that just goes to show you how well built these older cameras were. So yeah, with this particular camera, as beat up as the exterior looks, we had no issues using it, firing, and it performed perfectly well, honestly. All right, so let's move on to the positives. Now we did shoot Fuji Superior 400 on this setup and we shot basically everything at 5.6. Like I said, it was overcast, so we couldn't do as much as we wanted to, um, but at 5.6 and at 500 shutter speed, pretty much everything was in focus. We didn't have a lot of motion blur or anything like that or shake. We made sure to use the ledge and things like that to keep it as steady as we could. Matt did shoot one at f22, I believe, and I think the shutter speed on that was 1 60th. Uh, that photo was also up there. He kept that pretty steady, surprisingly, but basically we shot this wide open the whole time. Now this lens being in the condition that it is and everything, the compression is fantastic. Uh, I loved it, like as you can see from the portraits we shot, your subject the whole way through is completely in focus and then it just drops off immediately after that. So it made for some great portraits, gave it a nice bokeh background, but kept your subject completely in focus, so I really loved how that worked out. With the separation and everything on the front element, um, it was a bit surprising. So for focusing, as I mentioned before, you have this grip here and you pull and release to adjust your focus accordingly. Now shooting handheld, that's going to be a little awkward. Trying to pull and release your focus here and then also shooting with your hand like this and keeping it from going up and down. This is kind of a heavy setup. So it's not ideal, but uh, we managed to do an okay job of it. Normally you'd want to shoot at something like this. You have it on the tripod, you have your hand out here and adjusting and shooting that way. You're kind of stuck here. We did end up playing around and putting a cable release into the body of it. And then of course holding that release somewhere around here to give us kind of a little more grip and a little more stabilization and then pressing that shutter release. Not how you're supposed to do it. But we improvised, it worked, and it made it a little bit easier to handle. When this is on a tripod, you have these two silver knobs on each side of the grip. So what you then do is you pull your focus, get it where you want it, and then these knobs lock your focus in place. So on a tripod, that's great. If you have something that's moving or coming in and out, obviously you're probably not gonna lock it, you're probably gonna adjust as you go, and then keep it as close as you can when you press the shutter. But if you're shooting landscapes or anything that's not moving, or portraits and things like that with a subject still, that's kind of useful. If you're shooting handheld, maybe not as much. You probably could still get away with it, but I would probably just not use that if I was shooting anything off of a tripod. So I believe this is the older model of this lens. Uh, I have to look up the serial number and things like that, but if I'm not mistaken, the older model has two elements and the newer model has three. So the newer one obviously is gonna perform a little bit better, but even though this is the older version, I still really enjoyed using this lens. It was great. I really don't shoot anything above an 85 personally, just because for what I do, it's not really something that I need a lot. Yeah, I would love a 135, but for the professional work I do and everything, it's not a huge necessity. Before I got a 135, I would probably invest in something more like a 10 to 24. But nonetheless, this was a fun lens to shoot. I did enjoy it, it was kind of cool. I loved getting that compression with my portraits and being able to pull in that background to right behind them and just have it completely blown out. It was really nice to get some shots that had that kind of look. Now the aperture on this, I believe there's 24 blades uh, if I counted properly. I, I could probably look it up somewhere. It's gonna have a very traditional bouquet to it, which is nice. It's not distracting from your subject and things like that. Lastly, yes, I was impressed with how this lens and this camera performed. I will say that, would I keep this or invest in something like this? Probably not, again, just because of where I live and what I do, it's not something I'm gonna use a lot. However, if you're looking for something fun, you could even get an adapter, of course, and put it on a modern DSLR. I'm not quite sure how that would work out. Maybe I should try it on my Fuji. Nah, we'll save that for another time. A fun lens, very different, interesting to use. So thank you once again for checking in. I hope you enjoyed this episode. We still got a lot more coming your way. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment down below if you enjoyed it or didn't. Let me know what you would recommend. Any feedback you have is appreciated. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.